Shall we begin? Are we, are we ready to begin? At first, they are asked to do something simple, stand in a circle. Then the questions begin. If a parent pushed, grabbed, slapped, or threw something at you, step inside the circle. Each one is based on a list of recognised adverse childhood experiences covering emotional, physical and sexual abuse. If a household member ever attempted suicide, step inside the circle. If a household member ever went to prison, step inside the circle. Did you ever experience homelessness? Step inside the circle. Did you experience a violent assault or injury or witness violence against others outside of your home? Step inside the circle. I felt embarrassed. Mm -hmm. Stepping forward, I moved on, I moved away, and I just put it behind me. But then you realise that obviously, like doing things like this, you've not actually dealt with it, you've just been kind of masking it. My mum just died just no long before I came in here due to drugs, the same as what I'm in here for, and uh, that would have been definitely been me. Mm. I, so it's probably a good thing that can a, a blessing in disguise that I'm here. Help you break the cycle. Mm -hmm. Step inside the circle. This is the first time that the Compassion that Prison Project has worked in Scotland and with female Anybody offenders. Fritzi Horseman began this program in the maximum security prisons of California. With each yes, the circle becomes tighter, and the woman at the centre says this is when the real work begins. It's easier now to have more compassion for each other, isn't it? Yeah. We've only got each other. And we've all ended up in the exact same place. Awareness about your trauma is the first step to healing, but it's also the first step to changing your behaviour. If we destroy the people in prison, it reverberates back to the community. And I don't want another victim. I want to end victimhood. I want us all to be a whole society. I know it's a pie in the sky sometimes, but that's what I see. Since the pandemic, HMP Edinburgh, like other prisons, has seen the number it holds on remand double. It currently has a population of over 800. Around 70 are women. Half took part in these sessions. I certainly didn't join the prison service to turn this prison into a warehouse where you just incarcerate people like battery and so you know if if people want to have less victims of crime then we need to do something with people that commit crimes and there's no way around that we're not going to keep people in prison indefinitely so when you're letting people out you want them to be better and less likely to come back than when they came in in the first place i think that everything that we're doing in scotland is not working and we know that because there's an increase in suicide we've got the highest drug deaths in the world per capita um, so we wanted to try something radical, something new and something really brave and that's what Fritzi brings to the table. So I think this has been the, the status quo from the psychology department is they don't want to open a can of worms. So I am one of these traumatised individuals that scores 10 in an ACES questionnaire. The can of worms was festering in me. All I needed was somebody to put their hands inside the can and to nurture the worms that was there. I was dying inside. Do you know what, see for organisations to listen to you, I think you've got to get so far in Scotland, like, Ken, you've got to be in the worst, like, I had a, I've got, I had a bad drug problem and it wasn't until I was at my worst that then agencies came forward and took me on. It's making me f uh, feel different about being a parent, it's making me feel that I can open up and speak more to my kids and mm -hmm. I be there more I emotionally for them, instead of hiding everything all the time, I. <laughs> A lively session to help lighten the mood. And this also encourages some who have so far remained silent to open up. Berlini and Adiwell prisons also held these two day sessions. They plan to build on this work through existing recovery cafes. So Cisco's not a Broadway show. We're not a two day event, sing and dance and leave people exposed to, to their innermost vulnerabilities. This is about us coming in and providing 12 weeks aftercare for all the women based on what Fritzi's already been teaching them. And if the women at the end of the 12 weeks decide it's not enough, we need more, we're not going to put an expiration date on it. People often leave prison ready to take on the challenge that they're going to face and then they fail because the system doesn't allow them to succeed. So we need to look at the whole system. Prisons can play their part, these things will take time. But as much as, as the buildings and the bricks and mortar, it's about the relationships between the staff and the residents 
and the partnerships that we create with, with, with good people on the outside to help us do the work that we're trying to do. Like these things are good because even like me, I'm out soon, so I feel like I'm more emotionally ready to be able to deal with some things that I hadn't been before. Um, and I was in and it was a while, but I stayed out for nine years and then had a traumatic event and I spiralled downhill and ended up back in here. I, but I'm confident to say it'll be my last. We have 35 prisons in, the, in California, almost 100,000 people in California that are incarcerated. You have 8,000. You can turn this around in a few months if you decide to. And that's going to change the communities and that's going to change those children's lives. I mean, isn't that what we want? Isn't, don't we want a, a bright future, not only for ourselves, our children, but for Scotland? That's what I'm talking about. That's what's possible.